Okay. Sorry, Jim. Or were you in the flow, Jimmy? No, we we're just kind of chatting a little chatting. bit. Okay. Thanks for being patient with me, guys. That, like, with with this format, I have to make sure that everybody is in the right class and stuff. Um, so today, uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, bar chords, which is everyone's favorite subject. I understand. Um, I this is a, a secret that I've not really kept a secret and Jimmy like it's probably gonna offend Jimmy greatly but I hate bar chords I don't like them we all do you love bar chords I don't but, love them but you know I what just... <laughs> Jimmy loves bar chords because he he knows how to use them well to his advantage which opens up a lot of doors for him and that's why we're that's why we want to do this class because by utilizing bar chords knowing how to get around them it opens up all the doors you can play in any key um, as difficult as it is on your fingers especially for acoustic guitar um, like knowing bar chords is is essential uh, especially as you start playing with groups that you know you're having to like pick keys based on what the vocals can do um, so like as a as a example you might get get there for rehearsal and your vocalist is struggling with a cold or something and it's, like they may not be able to reach song in G, so they're like, uh, I need to do the song in F. So then you got to play it in F. Could use a capo, but if you forgot your capo at home, or you just want a different uh, texture, then bar chords are where it's at. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, bar chords, how to use them, how to uh, incorporate them into some, what you already do. And I might teach you some cheater chords as well, uh, if we have time. Um, so the thing with bar chords and Jimmy and I are going to tag team this. So feel free to Jimmy to jump in anytime you have a, uh, you know, yep. wisdom. Uh, the cool thing about bar chords is once you learn the shape, it's a movable chord. So you, it's the same shape, just whatever, whatever fret you put it on, it becomes a different, a different chord. So it's not like you're having to learn completely different shapes for different chords, uh, which is, which is really nice. So they're movable chords. Uh, it's universal between acoustic guitar and electric guitar. So whatever you do here, those of you who, because I know Anna kind of switches back and forth between acoustic and electric sometimes. Um, bar chords, even like for, for an electric, it's even more useful uh, in, in my mind. Like I'll use bar chords a lot more on electric than I do on acoustic. Uh, so this definitely translates across both acoustic and electric. Um, and it's, this is the way how we can play in non-guitar friendly keys. So you have, um, what, what would you say, Jimmy? Is, is there like four main types, four main shapes of these bar chords? Yeah, I think there's, there's four, four main types. You've got a, uh, major and a minor shape that have the root on the E string and a major and a minor shape that have the root on the A string. Um, and if you can get started with those, then, um, like Josh said, they're movable. So you learn four shapes, and then you can play all the major and minor chords that exist uh, by using those four shapes. Right. Um, okay, well, let's jump in. Um, page 67. I'm trying to pull up the book. Uh, if you have the, um, the guitar book that we uh, produced a couple years ago that Jimmy wrote, um, the second book, the back half of the book is basically all bar chords, which is really cool. Um, so the first one we're going to talk about is, is this goes in kind of reverse order from what the book does, but this is just how I how I have learned it. Uh, so hopefully it's okay, Jimmy. Um, we're going to talk about the E major type bar chord uh, for whatever like whatever reason. This is the the type of bar chord I use the most. Um, let me put up this. Uh, here it is. Here we go. Okay, so this is the E major type bar chord, um, which looks like this. We call it the E major type because uh, this is the basic shape of the E major chord. So if you know how to play E major, you basically know how, how this chord is supposed to go. Now, when you play E major, the nut of the guitar, which is this white this white strip, some it may be black on some of your guitars, but it's either it's either black or white. This acts as basically, it's the starting point at which the string vibrates. So it, uh, a lot of people sometimes will call it a zero fret. 
because uh, this is the point where um, where it you know the string starts vibrating. Um, so your E your E shape uh, starts there. If you were to you know play it like normally, I play with my with the, my first three fingers. That's how I play E. If you play it with your last three fingers, it leaves your your index finger open. It, that then becomes as you slide it up. That becomes the nut for for the different chords. So that's why um, that's why it's called the E major shape. So let's take a look at this real quick. And like I think a lot of you may actually already know. Like like Anna, do you like have you played with bar chords before? Like have you have you learned these? Okay, uh, Roger, have you do you know bar chords? Like have you played around with bar chords very much? Yeah. What about Jackie? You know bar chords? Okay. All right, so we, uh, we'll kind of go through this a little bit quick. Uh, like, I want to show you, like, how they work, but I also want to show you some, like, ways that I've, I've incorporated them into my playing. Uh, and maybe, maybe they'll be helpful for you. Um, so, like I said, this is an E major shape. It's called that way because it's, it looks like the E major chord. So, this chord here on, on the page, this is the chord G, only because uh, in this position, the root of the chord is on the 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 G note which is the third fret of the low E string so as you play that that becomes a G chord it's the same uh, same chord as you know playing G here it's just a different flavor and that's one of the things I like about learning different ways to play chords that you already know is that you know those are all those are all G chords, and learning different ways to play them uh, gives you different colors that you can play around with. All right, so let's take a look at this real quick. Um, let's do one of these examples. Um, okay. Uh, look at this figure 46 here in the book. Um, we're looking at an A chord, which this diagram tells you it's the E major shape bar chord, which starts on the fifth fret. So your your index finger starts on the fifth fret of your guitar. Um, let's see if I can make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So that's that's what the that's what the chord the shape will look like. See if you can uh, play around with that for a second where you are. This is where. Teaching on Zoom is not great because I'd love to be able to he hear what you guys are doing in real time. Um, just get used to it and um, tell me tell me what you're hearing. Like what? Like do you need do you need any help? Or are you good? You ready to move on? Like that kind of stuff. I don't want to spend too much time here if you're if you're if you're good with it. Anna, what do you think? What does it sound like for you? Pretty good. Yeah. You have any buzzing? No, not really. Okay. That's one of the things for me, like, when I was learning to play bar chords is, you know, I'd have strings that don't speak well or, like, they may be buzzy. And that comes with proper pressure, but also placement of, of your fingers. So, like, I always try to keep keep my fingers as close to the, the bar, fr the fret bar as I can. Yep. Yeah, I think, I think for all of us, uh, when we're playing these chords that, you know, it can be kind of tough. If we do uh, kind of the string by string thing where we go through and are just real, real honest with ourselves about whether or not the whole chord is coming out, then uh, uh, that, and that's really important anytime we learn a new chord, but especially on these bar chords, if we, if we do that to avoid the buzzing that Josh is talking about. Yeah. Yeah, that's, and that's, that's, the only, that's pretty, pretty much the only reason people hate bar chords is because it's sometimes difficult to get it to like speak all the way across the chord. Um, okay, so I know we, we didn't really, uh, here, let's do this one because it does, it does move around a little bit. All right, we're going to do this. This starts on an A chord for two measures, then it moves to a B chord. It's the same shape, but we're moving up two frets. Okay, so let's do, let's see, um, Anna, what, pick, show, um, pick a, a strumming pattern for us, kind of, let's, let's, let's let you guys pick strumming patterns. What, what kind of pattern would you like to do? I guess just quarter notes. Quarter notes? Okay. 
All right, so we start on the A chord. So it's E major type bar chord uh, on the fifth fret and quarter notes here. Let's get a let's get a tempo. That's the wrong app. Let's move up a little bit. This is 90. 90 is a good starting place for me. Here we go, quarter notes. One, two, ready, A. Move up two frets, B. All right, back down to A. B. And now we have E. Uh... Oh, because we this book assumes that we've already talked about A major shapes. I was like, wait, we haven't talked about that in a second. Yeah, okay. Well, that, that's that's a good segue. Um, do you guys want to do another exercise on the E major shapes, or do you you feel you feel pretty good on that? I don't want to spend time on if if you've already got it. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. All right, so that's E major shape. Uh, let's do let's do the A major shape. Uh, let's see, that's 57. It takes a second for it to render 57. A major type bar chords. I know this girl. I'm just kidding. I don't. I don't know what chord she seems to be playing there. Yeah, that's you know that's the old B knuckle seven. Oh yeah. By the way, I don't know why people do this. I hate this so much. Like, have have you ever tried to do like? Do you guys have your strings like this? Do you guys do that? Yeah, Ro Roger does it right. I hate this so I don't like. I've tried to do my string ends like this. It is hard because it just like it always spins out and then and then it's just like waving this looks so gross to me yes you don't look cool don't do that just clip them maybe it maybe that makes me an old man it's like those people on tv shows you see with the really long gross fingernails mm -hmm. that's what it looks like it's gross yeah okay this is an a major type bar chord and we call it that way because if you if you take if you play the shape and you move it all the way back down to where your your index finger becomes the nut you're just on an A, an A chord. Now this is a. Let's see. Do they they teach it this way? This is just me. When I was learning this chord, when I was learning how to play, um, I used to play it where uh, I would use all three fingers instead of like the bar, like with one. With, so like I'd have to play like this. As I've learned how to play, I guess like I've I've moved over to like this kind of shape but um you know at the risk of i don't really know telling you something wrong and jimmy could tell me the other way if if you have trouble barring with like your third finger or your pinky finger you can use your three fingers like this in my mind yeah that this this is my least favorite of all the bar chords uh it's yeah. um if you have to get it out by using the three finger thing, you can do that. Um, I, I'll be honest, and I think I say this in the book, the note on the high E string um, is incredibly difficult to get out. And you don't need it because that note, like in this C shape, that note is a G. And that's the same note that you're already playing on the D string in a different octave. So it already exists in the chord. You don't need it. So I just mute that string uh, whenever I bar this. The danger of doing that though, and this is a bad habit of my playing, is sometimes I, whenever I'm barring, I accidentally lay my finger down and play a note on the high E string. That I'm, yeah, it's a, which it's is a nice nine chord. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 interesting uh, sounding. Um, a six, I guess that's a six. Yeah, yeah, it's a six. Um, but it um, but it's not a part of the chord, so you have to be careful. I, Josh, I don't know about you, but I find myself getting lazy, my third finger getting tired, and using my pinky to bar it a lot too. That's. I, I use my pinky all the time because this this is really difficult for me for yeah. whatever reason. Using my ring finger, I always use 
Yeah. I always use my pinky. And if to, to play it like this, it, like there's a 0% chance I'm getting out that high E string. Yep. If I need that high E string, I have to play it with three fingers. Then, then I can't I can yeah. get it to come out. I don't know why this is the textbook correct way of doing it, but it is. The only reason I can think of is that if you have to add a suspension with your pinky, you can do that. But I, yeah, I, I use my pinky most of the time when I play it. Yeah. So all that to say, you've got some options. Uh, then, like, I like it. Like, I don't. It is. It is a lot easier to play with your pinky. Um, like for me, because it almost becomes like a power chord, even though like it has that third in it, that third of a chord. Like it just has like. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, let's do something together with this, uh, where we we go. Uh, the exercise isn't here, but I want us. I want us to. Uh, I want to do this together with the E shape. So let's do. Um, Let's do uh, back and forth between on the fifth fret, the A major shape on the fifth fret, which becomes a D chord. And then we'll take that to a fifth fret E major type bar chord, which is an A chord. All right. So we're just going back and forth between these two. And this is like in like real real life like you will often go on the same fret between the A major type and the E major type because I mean depending on which way you look at it it's either fourth or a fifth apart but either either way they're both part of whatever key you're in so they they do work well together so let's start with the the D chord which is the A major shape on the on the A on the fifth fret so let's do eight, an eighth note pattern uh, for two bars, and then we'll shift down to the E major type on the fifth fret, which is an, an A chord. Uh, eighth notes for two two measures. Let's just do that. All right, here we go. One and two and ready A. One two. Here's the A chord. One two. Here's the D chord. A chord and end on the D chord. Yeah. All right. Thoughts? Is that is that easy peasy or you having trouble getting some of those notes out? That was hard. My hand hurts. What'd you say, Roger? I said my hand hurts. Yeah, that's the other thing with with bar chords is it it takes a little bit of strength, particularly on an acoustic guitar. Roger, when we oh sorry, Josh. No, go ahead. I, I was just saying, Roger, when we did the filming for these books for the uh, um, these chapters, once we got into bar chords, we we did like five straight days of filming. By the third day, we all went to Guitar Center and bought lighter strings for our guitars because like filming yourself doing bar chords eight hours a day was absolute torture. So yeah, no shame in your hands hurting on this stuff at all. Yeah, and I've been I've been stringing this like my guitars with heavy gauge strings for uh, oh, the, oh these are mediums with medium gauge strings for the last few years, uh, which I, that's another reason I don't like playing bar chords because <laughs> on medium strings it's it's not fun. I almost did this on electric today, but that's cheating. Um, okay, yeah, that's good. Let me, let's try let's try another exercise. Let's um let's do it the other way around this time on the seventh fret. So we'll start with the E major shape on the seventh fret, which uh can anybody tell me what chord that would be? So seventh fret E major type bar chord, what chord is that? What do you think? What chord is it? Uh, does anybody remember, um, well, we call it the E major type bar chord because uh, the root is on the E string. So what note is the 7th fret on the E string? 
The C sharp? Not not B. the seventh fret. B. B. Yeah, it's B. So on the seventh fret, an E major shape bar chord is a B chord. All right, and then from there we'll go to the same fret with the A major type bar chord. Does anybody know what chord that would be? So what note is that on the A string? Josh, can we do a, just a real quick kind of refresher on the notes on the low E and A string? Yep. Would, would you mind if I did that? That, that might help Go us out it. a little bit here. Yeah. Um, so for all of us, just kind of a quick way to, to help memorize notes on the guitar neck is to use, use the dots that are provided for you. I don't think, yeah, I've got dots on the front of mine. I don't know if you can see them or not. Uh, but most guitars are going to have dots on the third, fifth, and seventh frets. So if you're on the low E string and you just memorize where what notes are on the dots, then you can work your way back and forward from there rather than having to go all the way from the open string. So everybody play their low open E string just real quick. We'll do this together. Play your open E. That note is obviously going to be E. Uh, now play the third fret of the E string. That note is G. It's easy to remember because it's the lowest note in a G chord, so you have G. If you were to do a major type bar chord, off of that uh, fret, it would be a G major type because the root is G and the shape is major. It's like a formula, a root plus a, a shape equals the name of your chord. So third fret is G, fifth fret is A, seventh fret is B. So just remember those three frets, G, A, B. So if you had to find something on the eighth fret of the low E string, you don't have to count from the open E. You can start at B and go up one note, which would be C. Similar thing on the A string. You have open A. Then the third fret of the A string is C. Easy to remember because of a C chord. The fifth fret is D. And the seventh fret is E. It's in alphabetical order. So again, if you, had to, if you were on the fifth fret, if you wanted to find like an E flat, for instance, and you knew that the fifth fret was D, and you can go up one note to E flat, play a major shape, you have an E flat major chord. So, low E string, G, A, B, A string, C, D, E. Memorize those and you'll work your way around your fretboard a lot quicker. Yeah, that's, that's helpful. Um, and you'll learn like different, different tricks as well. Like I, I got around a long time uh, it was just like like when you when you tune your guitar, like I always tuned my guitar by using the fifth fret method. So like yeah, that's you know, a great one. The fifth fret of one string is the open string of the next one until you get to the G string, and then it's the fourth fret of the G string is the same as the open B string, and that's that's how I know like fifth fret of the E string is a, is an A. So and then D and then G. So that's how like I knew like I had a, a starting point to figure it out in the middle of the neck. And then from there, I would go up. And the same thing on the 12th fret, which is the double dot. That's your octave. So if nothing else, it's this this is an E, and you can kind of work your way down as well. Um, there, there are different tricks that you could do for, for that. Okay, so all right, back to this thing. So 7th fret, we have the E major type bar chord, which is a B. And then your A major type bar chord, which is A. Not an e. A, but it's an, it's an E, right. All right, so let's do uh, eighth notes. Uh, same thing we were doing before. Two measures of the B chord, two measures of the E chord. Here we go. One, two, ready, go. One, two, here's E, go. One, two, here's B. Man, it does wear your hand out, doesn't it? All right, let me, let's let's talk about some some ways that you can kind of uh, spruce this up a little bit. So we have um, 
We have our A major shape, like this. That's what we're talking about. You can do an A, uh, a major two type as well by um, taking off of, so like if you're, if you're using one finger, you'll have to switch to using like three fingers here for a second, but you can, if you can, uh, this is, it's a little tougher, but if you can bar, if you can lift up that third finger, uh, it becomes a two chord, like a bar two chord, which, which is kind of cool. So a lot of times I'll, if I'm, if I'm in bar chords, uh, I will use uh, my like use three fingers instead of one here, so that I can go I can do a hammer on between an open two chord into the into the the full A major shape bar chord. So it'll sound like. And then you can slide that pinky up for a suspended kind of thing. So. But I'm not gonna lie. It, Trying to get that that bar clean for those the those two notes is uh, is a little tricky, but see see if you can figure that out real quick. So, um, you know, I'm still in the seventh fret, uh, basically starting with an A major shape, but you uh, you have uh, nothing on the B string other than the bar that you're working on. So, uh, starting on the A string, it's you know seventh fret, and then ninth fret on the D, ninth fret on the G. 7th fret on the B, 7th fret on the E. And you can switch fingers too. It's like you, you can use your ring and your pinky finger if you'd like. See if you can play with that. I'm not going to lie. I kind of cheat whenever I'm doing my, uh, when I'm using just my ring and my pinky finger to play those two notes, kind of like a bar chord. My first thing, my middle finger lays down on my first finger and helps press it down. I do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just, why not? It's there. Make it happen. Yeah. So here's here's another little a little fun thing that I'll do sometimes. I will I will use especially if I'm using my ring and my pinky finger instead of my index and middle finger. Uh, I'll use my my middle finger as like a a pivot point between the major 7 like a major 7 2 chord which sounds like this. Uh, so if I start with a two chord, I'm, I'm going down one fret on the G string. So it's like, well, you can't really see. It looks like this. But then you can do the hammer on back to like, you know, where you were before. Yeah, and it just kind of gives you a, like a different. It's a, a different color of that, just rather than just the standard A-shaped bar chord. What do you think about that? Is that is that too crazy? Or do you want do you want to unpack it a little bit? You guys are talkative. Okay. Um, well, let's let's try to put these a these a little bit in practice. Let's go back down. Uh, let's go back down to the fifth fret. Let's let's do an exercise between uh, the fifth fret E major shape, which is uh, it's an A chord, and then we'll go to the fifth fret A major shape, but the two the two shape the two chord. So for me, uh, be, uh, I find it's easier to just go up. Everything goes up a string. So I'm using my, my ring and my pinky finger there. Does that make sense? So let's go back and forth between those, those two chords. And then we'll, we'll give our fingers a rest. All right, here we go. Uh, let's do eighth notes again. One, two, and ready and go. One, two, here's the D chord. One, two, back to the A chord. One, two, here's the D chord. Yeah.
hand hurts. And then you get like lines on your fingers. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. I, I think I'd still prefer like a capo and regular chords, but. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the one of the things where it's like a, you want to train to where it's really hard now so that it's easy when you do have to do it. And it, it does happen. Like I, like I can tell you there's a couple of songs that we do regularly um, where there'll be a key change and you go up a half step and mm -hmm. you just like you you have to be confident in your bar chords to be able to do it yeah yeah definitely and, and i think josh i think most of the time we try and find ways to where if you do have to use a bar chord regularly in tunes you might have one of the chords that uh you know just can't be accessed openly um so rarely i feel like in my playing anyway on acoustic guitar am i having to do multiple bar, bar chords back to back unless it's one of those key change situations like you talk about yeah uh, is it the same for you you think yeah i mean there like there are times and and i like i'm at the point where like like i choose i choose my fingerings and keys based on the color that i want not necessarily based on the chords that i can play yeah um because like at this like i can i can play most chords unless they're like you know chords with like lots of extensions and that kind of stuff but um like I will choose, so like let's say we're in the key of B flat or something. I could put a capo on on the third fret and play it in G, but like, um, see, I don't even have a capo here. Otherwise, I'd show you. There are times where like, like this like two chord, this E flat two. I like that sound better than it would be if I if I had a capo on. Then it would be. Let's see if I can artificially create create it. Uh, it's like if I had a capo on it, it would sound like this. But like a, that kind of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. But this, like, I just like this color a little better. So you, like, you could, you might, you might just like the way that chord sounds in that situation a little better. And that's why we, we expand our chord vac vocabulary so that we can choose chords based off of what we like the sound of in that moment, not based on, well, this is the only one that I know how to play, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, so let's talk. So we, those are the two major types. Let's talk about the minor types. Uh, the Like the A minor type bar chord, I think that's, I actually write down that page number. That's the C. Those are the altered bass lines. Sharp with flats. This is an A, A minor type bar chord. So this is a. It's a, the chord is a C minor because it's, it's on the uh, it's on the third fret. And it's called the A minor type because, like the others, if you if you walk it all the way back down so that your finger becomes the nut, it's just an A minor chord. That, you know, I think you guys know how to play A minor. But if you when you walk when you move it up, it could be any chord. Yeah, there you go. So. Um, so you have a major type, a minor type, and I use like a, the a minor type bar chord is probably the one I use the most of the bar chords. Like I'll like even even if I'm in the key of G or something, I will sometimes play E minor up here just because I like I like the way this sounds as opposed to this. like this. This is a good E minor too, but sometimes you want to if you if you come up here kind of stand out a little bit more. It cuts through the mix a little better than down here because this can get muddy. Um, yeah, let's do this. Let's let's do it in practice. So, um, I'm trying to think of like where where would you go with it? Yep. 
Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's do um, this is you know a real case scenario where you may go from like a B flat chord, which is the E major type bar chord on the sixth fret, sixth fret. So your B is the sixth sixth fret of the low E string, and if you do an E major shape bar chord on that fret, you have a B flat chord. Then let's go from B flat up to D flat which is the A major shape bar chord on the fifth fret of the A string. That, is that D or D, D, D minor? Yeah, D minor. What did I say? Okay. I, I, I don't know. You, you broke up and I couldn't uh, get you there. Yeah, so B, from B flat, which is a sixth fret E shape bar chord, to a, a D minor chord, which is the A minor shape on uh, the fifth fret. B flat, D minor. Then we'll. I think that's where we'll probably go after that. But all right, let's go back and forth between those two chords. So we'll start with B flat. Ready? Uh, on our eighth notes. Oh, one, two, and ready, go. B flat. Here's the D minor, which is the fifth fret. One, two, go back to B flat, sixth fret. Nice. One, two, here's D minor. One, two, end on B flat. It's really weird to be like watching you guys play along with me in complete random times. It's just how it is. Okay, so there's A minor type. Let's talk about the like an alteration of that, which is the A minor seven type. So same, let's uh, it's basically the same chord, but the seven uh, it's a minor seven type. So um, on the fifth fret of the A string, we have the A minor. If you lift up your um, your pinky finger becomes a minor seven. It, it will require your your index finger to bar that fifth fret as well, which makes it a little a little tricky, but it's not too bad. So from the regular A minor type to the A minor seven type, you just pick up your pinky finger. Ooh, Jackie's gonna get a chair. It's getting serious. Oh, well, my leg fell asleep, so I need to get a chair. Hey, Josh, Adley, you here? Yeah, man. I got disconnected. Can you put me back into the breakout room? Oh yeah, yeah. Four or five more. One second. Uh, let's see. Breakout rooms. Adley Charles. Base. There you go. Thank you, sir. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and pretend like I'll use the, I'll probably use the minor seven type more than just the regular A minor shape, but. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's try. Let's try an exercise where. Um, let's do. This is an E minor seven chord, but it's the uh, that minor that A minor seven shape on the seventh fret of the A string. All right, and then we're gonna we're gonna go to a C chord, which is the eighth fret of the of the E string. It's an E major type bar chord. On it's an E major type on the eighth fret of the E string. So we're going from an E minor seven, which is the A minor seven shape on the seventh fret, to a C chord, which is the eighth fret E major shape. And 
then uh, we will finish the exercise on a G chord, which could be E major shape on the third fret or an A major shape on the tenth fret. That's pr probably not what you would use on acoustic guitar, but electric guitar could absolutely use this this kind of progression. So just a recap. 7th fret, A major, A minor type, A minor 7 type, to a C, E major type, and then to a G chord, which is the A major shape on the 10th fret. I'll take you a second to find that. It sounds like Coldplay. Minor 7, to a C major, to a G major on the 10th fret. Hopefully you found it now. Anybody have anybody have trouble with it? That they want help before we before we do the exercise. Sweet. All right. Uh, eighth notes. Same thing. Here we go. One, two. Here's the. Uh, sorry, I forgot what chord it was. It's the E E minor seven. One and two and ready go. One more time. One, two. Here's C. Okay, so those are uh, those are three of the four the four bar chords. The last one, just so we can mention it before we have to get off of here, is the E minor shape, um, which is you know it doesn't matter what fret you're on because uh, it's the same shape. That's what's beautiful about the shape. It's it's the same. It looks the same as the E minor, like down here, just with a bar uh, imitating the nut. Roger's got it. He's working on his way up the neck. Yeah. So these all can be um, like you can move around the, the entire fretboard just with these bar chords, which is really nice. And I would encourage you as an exercise on your own uh, to see if you can play uh, a standard progression using only bar chords. Because um, at the end of the day, this, like the fretboard, playing guitar is all about shapes. If you can figure out the shapes that you're that you're working with, and yes, it's the chord shapes, but also where you go on the fretboard is is a shape that is repeatable. So if you can figure out that shape, uh, you can you can get anywhere you need to go. So I know that if I'm if I'm working on if like the E major type bar chord is my is my one chord, I can get to the five by going up one string and up two frets. And I can get to the sixth chord by going up two frets more, which is a minor chord. And then I can get to the five chord by going uh, up a up a fret and down a string, and then now I'm on the E major shape. I know that's, that that can be complicated when you explain it like that, but all it's all just a shape. But then you could do it in any key. opens up a lot of doors for you so um, I, I encourage you guys to try to figure out that that pattern so play play around with these like as an exercise play a song using only bar chords and see if you can yeah. do it yeah this is really useful you guys as well if you're playing with another guitar player 
uh, to be able to just play something different than what he's playing, especially if you have electric and acoustic in the group. I, I, I don't know about you, Josh, but I tend to use a lot more of these on electric than I do acoustic. Yeah. Um, uh, so if like, but even if Josh and I were like playing a Vespers at TMI or something, and and uh, he's leading and, and playing open chords, then I might choose to play the same progression, even if it's in the key of G, but with bar chords. So I'm playing higher, and we're not competing for the same space. Uh, mm -hmm. So anytime you start to add multiple guitars, then um, it's good to be able to play chords in a different area, uh, so that you're not. Uh, trampling all over each other and bar chords are kind of the gateway to to all the rest of that yep absolutely that and that's how i see them like bar like bar chords are not fun uh but it is the gateway to playing more fun stuff like uh knowing the yes. foundation of the bar chord lets you play the cool stuff uh which i'm hoping we can and like we may kind of shift gears here jimmy a little bit later in the week um especially because it looks like you know like we're like these guys on acoustic uh, will be here. I haven't seen anybody playing electric yet, so maybe yep. like later we can work on parlaying this into different different chord shapes. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, that could be kind of cool. Yeah. So today's Wednesday. Tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to talk. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, playing in alternate tunings, like uh, drop D or dad gad, or uh, I was even going to show you like a, a high strung guitar that uh, is new to me, but it's kind of fun. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll talk about alternate tunings tomorrow, and then maybe Friday we'll talk about different chord shapes that you can you can play around with. Hey, Roger, did you have a question? I thought I saw you start to talk there. Yeah, I was asking. Do you not have anyone playing electric? Uh, not not so far this week. Oh. I. Yeah, but Roger, we were saying if if you would want to work on some electric stuff, then Josh and I can easily separate into different rooms. Yep. Um So. So if you wanted to do that, then then we could do that tomorrow. Okay. Uh, and then we, um, of course, I mean, there's private lesson signups that you can do with anybody as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, like Anna, Anna plays electric sometimes too. Jackie, do you ever play? You ever play electric guitar? I haven't in a while. You haven't in a while. I mean, it's it's like I want I want to make sure this is something that you guys are going to get what out of it what is useful to you so i mean we can do some electric guitar stuff or we can split um like we were planning on doing some stuff with pedals uh in the electric guitar class if you guys use pedals or amp tone like that kind of stuff we can talk about that as well um so just let us know maybe i'll ask you tomorrow see see what you what, what you like because i think alternate tunings are, are really fun to play with but we could maybe we could do a half lesson with alternate tunings and then go into like e-guitar shapes or pedals or like that kind of stuff. I used a uh, alternate tuning before. You have? Yeah, I used uh, where I... I think I lost everybody. You guys still there? Hello. Hello. Hey guys, you still there? <laughs>